and uh, yeah now we are discussing about the uh, paleozoic uh, mesozoic and uh, gondwana groups in the geological time the paleozoic era is the first uh, era in the benthozoic eon it covers the time between the roughly around uh, 544 million years and uh, until uh, it was a uh, calculated as a 245 million years. The Paleozoic or uh, Paleozoic era, it is the um, words, it's a uh, derivated from the Greek, Paleos means uh, old, Geo means life, uh, and also it is called the meaning of uh, life also, or we are calling that is the ancient uh, life. And the earliest of the three geologic eras of a Paleozoic uh, eon, the um, Paleozoic era spans six geological time periods, including uh, the Cambrian period, that is a uh, 544 to 500 million years, Ardeocene uh, period, that is a uh, 500 to 440 million years, Silurian. 442, 410 million years, Devonian, uh, 410 to 360 million years, and the Carboniferous period, now that is uh, 360 million years to 286 million years in many modern geological uh, texts, especially those in the United States, the time of the Carboniferous period, it was uh, covered the two alternative geological periods. and. Uh, it's a uh, the Mississippian period. It is a three sixty million years to three twenty five million years, and the Peninsulian period. It was a uh, around uh, three hundred twenty five million years to two eighty six million years. The final geological uh, time period in the Paleozoic era is the Permian period. It was a uh, around uh, 286 million years to 245 million years. So, when you into this uh, onset of the Paleozoic era, it is marked by the Cambrian exploitation, the sudden appearance of numerous uh, fossils. Yeah, this is a geological uh, evolution and it contains a uh, all the periods uh, actually we discussed uh, all this and when you come into this is a paleozoic period here uh, again uh, the paleozoic stratigraphy it was uh, established and it was a uh, uh, established at the based on the paleoanthropological paleo uh, uh, and the stratigraphical work, then it's a different part of uh, the world and also in the Himalayas of in India. The yeah, Paleozoic uh, rocks are mainly is confined in the Himalayas with the exception uh, of a few exposures that's maybe marine uh, paleo. Mm, Permo Carboniferous and the lower Gondwana continental uh, deposits. The fossils found in these rocks, uh, the best examples are uh, uh, graptolites, trilobites, brachio, uh, pods, corals, crinoids, and crystoids, virozoans, polycipodes, cyclopods, plants, and uh, some of the varieties of uh, species also found. And uh, uh, the mesozoic rocks, it mainly contains uh, uh, exposed on the city uh, shales and uh, in Kashmir and uh, Kutch, Kaurastra formations. Uh, and it was uh, located in uh, Terisara Palli, in Pondicherry, Varisa, and uh, of some regions. Mesozoic period, it's a uh, significant of a marine uh, transpiration and uh, regression uh, deposits. So when you go into the uh, Gondwana rocks, these are all very developed uh, from the Carboniferous to Cretaceous uh, periods 
in the river bank basins like damodar mahanadi uh, godavari nambada so on pranahita uh, which are located in peninsular india and these are also developed in the eastern himalayas and uh, uh, lesser uh, himalayas the gondwana sediments were uh, studied uh, first uh, by medlicott in 7, 1872 and he has uh, given name on the gondwana succession now it has uh, become a uh, uh, gondwana super group yeah and uh, some basic uh, tectonics uh, of uh, uh, paleozoic this uh, geologically the paleozoic uh, starts uh, shortly after the break up of the supercontinent it's called uh, uh, panotia and at the end of the global uh, ice age and throughout the early paleozoic the at a landmass was broken up to substantial number of relatively small continents uh, towards end of the era the continents have gathered together into the supercontinent called the pangaea yes at the time it was a uh, uh, farm and by the later paleozoic uh, continental collisions formed uh, supercontinent uh, uh, pangaea and it's resulted uh, some of the great mountain chains including the appalachian urals and uh, uh, tasmans yeah the stratigraphic sequence of uh, uh, paleozoic uh, uh, formations in india uh, it is uh, mainly uh, it's a consisting of a most quartzite and la- the lithology of a most uh, quartzite it is a uh, uh, white and green ortho quartzite and a uh, second one it is a uh, characteristic uh, fossils it has a size of porphyria arthritis and uh, calceola the age about uh, around uh, here it is mentioned middle to late devonian and next uh, formation it is a uh, nopag beds the lithology it contains uh, shales sandy shales silicious limestones and fossils are uh, found here uh, elanus palamen artis triplica the age about uh, around here the silurian to middle devonian and some it has a uh, uh, unfossilly ferrous beds also the lithology it is uh, about shales silicious uh, shales and characteristics of uh, fossils no fossils were found here so that it is called as a unfossilly ferrous bed and gauron beds these are uh, gauron beds uh, having the lithology shales uh, characteristic fossils are uh, diploptera prasopora montoptera artis early silurian and uh, late ordovician of okay, this age and the succession of particularly uh, the limestones and uh, shales the limestones and the shales uh, named lipoc formation it is confirmably succeed in the most quartet in the city valley and the upper part it contain the full of uh, protoptera of a late carboniferous age of uh, fossils we have identified and uh, uh, the there is a two formations it's a consisting of a kanavar group uh, if you go into this is a kashmir range in a kashmir uh, range the panchal volcanic uh, formation you know, formed and it is uh, followed by the novel uh, cultis and the silicious shales 
it is the inclusion of a gangam of teres and other fossils which are equivalent to this tall tail group of gondwana in the indian uh, peninsula and the succession marine fossil teres limestone and it has a shales and it has been the named uh, as a given formation of uh, permian age yeah given formations uh, confirmably and which are overlined by the succession of a limestones and the shales and it's uh, giving a good amount of uh, triassic uh, fauna fossils and next uh, uh, these are all the uh, the moment how they were uh, uh, formed the different uh, continents on the earth at the time it's uh, showing that one uh, but actually it is not in our uh, syllabus uh, the animal lives Yes, at the time the paleozoic life is a sudden appearance of nearly of all invertebrate animal. Phyla in a great abundance at the beginning of the Cambrian. A few primitive fish like invertebrates and then afterwards vertebrates which are appeared in the Cambrian and the Ordovician age. Scorpions are appeared in a Silurian age uh, and some land vertebrates and amphibians in a Devonian. Land reptiles uh, in the Carboniferous and marine reptiles in the Permian. Amphibians were uh, dominant uh, vertebrates uh, until the mid uh, Carboniferous of age due to the climatological changes and it uh, greatly reduced their uh, diversity. And at the same time, the reptiles were processed and continued the increase in number and variety by the uh, late um, Permian. And also we will uh, see the, some uh, uh, plant lives also. And uh, next coming to the mesozoic uh, formations. The Mesozoic uh, formations, it was uh, introduced by the John uh, uh, Phillips in 1840 for the rock formations and it's uh, containing the uh, remains of uh, middle forms of a life. The Mesozoic era that begins uh, around about uh, uh, 230 million years ago and it was a uh, closed about uh, 65 million years ago in geological time scale. The Mesozoic era, it has been further divided into the three periods. Those are the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. Yes. Uh, dating from the 245 to uh, are 230 to 65 million years. The Mesozoic middle uh, elements, the Mesozoic mid of this age, the middle elements, uh, the age of a dinosaurus, it's marked the beginning of a land animals and uh, plants also. During this era, we have uh, found uh, gymnosperms, uh, that is a uh, seed bearing plants, uh, first evolved and invading the deep into the new tertiary away from the shores where water was plenty full. As this uh, new plants uh, moved inland, animals soon followed. The dinosaurs evolved, flourished in every habitat and land, then re-invaded in the oceans. Yes, so, so many changes has uh, come at that uh, time. Uh, and particularly it is, uh, we can uh, say that is uh, the Mesozoic era between that uh, Triassic period, maybe it is around uh, 248 million years uh, up to it's a bit of uh, 260 million years. And the um, uh, birds, dinosaurs, mammals and the birds evolved uh, at the time. 
and in a Jurassic, uh, Jurassic period, birds are evolved. And when you go into this is a period of a uh, Cretaceous, the dinosaurs uh, slowly it's going to the extinct. The age about uh, around uh, up to sixty-five million years, and after that, Cenozoic uh, era was uh, started from sixty-five million years up to now. Now, peoples, uh, the human beings, the plants, lives are evolved in this. Uh, uh, era. And particularly if you go into the, the geology of this age, at the beginning of this is a Triassic period. All of the continents were uh, lumped together into a large continent uh, called, it is called as a Pantia, you know. Uh, there was uh, no Atlantic Ocean at this time. Mm -hmm. Approximately around uh, about uh, 135 million years ago, this continent uh, broke up into two major land uh, masses. That is called the uh, one, it is a Laurasia, and second one, it is a Gondwana. Here, 35 million years later, Gondwana broke up into the present day, as South Africa and South America. The Indian subcontinent begins uh, uh, its 8,000 kilometers journey, the passing uh, Asia. Uh, 40 million, 45 million years ago, Australia, like South America, became independent of Antarctica. Uh, the continents were formed. At the end of the Paleozoic era, the land would become the continents Europe, Asia, and the crashed, uh, no, uh, crashed as, uh, into the North America by the time of the Mesozoic period. Pangea is a supercontinent and had the Formed. Then, yeah, these are the reptiles what we have uh, uh, found in the Mesozoic uh, era. Brontosaurus and uh, Stegosaurus. Perodactyle and uh, Rhinosaurus. These and my life was a uh, found at the time, and during this the Mesozoic era, where the dinosaurs lived, uh, coniferous uh, dominated the landscape. This slow-growing evergreen trees and the shrubs probably constituted the majority of the herbivorous uh, dino uh, dinosaurs. And when dinosaurs died, six that's one only. Uh, conifers were uh, probably very important food for the dinosaurs at the time, uh, including the large uh, part of uh, sauropods. And this picture it is uh, showing here the bronchiosaurus. It is a herbivorous. And glass of the trees. Uh, is uh, like a tree, it is seed of fern from the Permian uh, through the Triassic period. It had a tongue shaped uh, leaves and was about uh, 12 feet tall. Glass of Paris was a dominant plant in Gondwana group. It was in early Triassic uh, period. And the Triassic, it was a characteristic by the craterites and the related of ammonites, brachiopods, cephalopods, um, cephalopods, and other um, um, groups. And the, the first group uh, is uh, characterized by the simple uh, sutures so the way it is the second the shell remain the smooth and the chain complicated the shoe suture uh, uh, lines the example for uh, gymnites and uh, pikeites and next coming into the
جرافيك اجين فيزيك Yeah, Jurassic group. Uh, yeah, this uh, Jurassic, uh, it's a uh, name. It is a uh, derived from the Jura Mountains in the Central Europe. The Jurassic rocks are deposited in particularly in the Spiti and the Kashmir valleys of uh, Himalaya, Kutch, and Saurashtra in uh, Gujarat. And also, it's uh, it was in uh, Western uh, Rajasthan, uh, Varissa, and Andhra Pradesh, along this is the eastern coast of uh, India. This the outcrops of Jurassic rock have restricted their distribution in Kashmir. The Jurassic uh, sequence it's well developed at the Kutch in Gujarat stage, and it is also known as a Jurassic uh, Kutch. In a Kutch region, the Jurassic are comprising the Panchatapcheri patrol formations, which are exposed in a three anticlinal uh, chains of ridges and which are uh, showing the trending east uh, and west direction. The southernmost of the uh, chain it is extended from the Katrol Charwa range in the south of uh, Buj. And the succession of uh, Jurassic uh, Kutch group. Now coming to the Kutch, the Kutch formation it was uh, formed in a Mesozoic rock, and the range is uh, from age and Middle Jurassic to Lower uh, Cretaceous, are particularly well developed in a uh, Kutch. These rocks are uh, regarded the oldest and the most important static crystal formations in a Kutch. The sedimentary rocks are representing a phase of a marine transgression along the western part of India during the uh, particular uh, Jurassic period. The western margin of a uh, Indian peninsula Still, it's uh, affecting by the rifting along the major protozoic orogenic uh, trends like uh, Aravali Delhi and uh, Satpura Mobile Belt. The Kutch Rift is, is the northernmost pericontinental embedded basin and is situated between the subsurface. Uh, Nagara Parker uplift that is called that is called as a NPU in the north, Radhanpur Barmar Arch in the east, and uh, Ketchavar uplift in the south. Yeah, the Kutch Basin evolved into the two stages. The first one it is a rift stage. Uh, based in subsidence along the normal uh, fault and second one it is the uh, inversion stage uplift along the same part by the reverse uh, uh, movements. The succession of the Jurassic group of a Kutch, let us see, and the formations Panchmam uh, formation, it has a thickness about uh, 300 meters. And it is a, a subdivision into the coral uh, beds, shelly. And second one is a limestone. And third one is a cow bed beds. And there is an unconformity uh, between the Jurassic uh, group of a touch and uh, pre Cambrian basement. It was not exposed. And the parchment formation, it has a Thickness about uh, 300 meters, and it's also having the some uh, fossils. 
those are the Eomidon corbula, Procerites, Mascopalites, and these are the fossils we can uh, uh, identify. And next formation, it is a cherry formation. The thickness uh, around it is uh, 360 meters. And again, it is a subdivide uh, into the macrocephalus uh, beds, Rahimani beds, Anceps beds, Athleta beds, Dosa uli. And the characteristic of a fossil is here Belmonites, Macrocephalites, Ryngia fossils. Perisipnitis, primarily serous fossils are identified. And next, coming into the next formation, uh, cutthroat formation, the thickness around about here uh, 300 meters, and it is uh, subdivided uh, into Tanktol sandstone, Jurum, Belmonitis moss, lower cutthroat shale, middle cutthroat sandstone. Upper control uh, sandstone. Uh, these are, are uh, having the again uh, characteristics of uh, some uh, fossils. Epimyatis, Belemnites, Tara melliceros, Vagenia, and Petrolliceros. These are the fossils. And next formation, it is a Umia formation. The thickness, it is uh, about a thousand uh, meters. And it is a sub divided into the Ukra bed. And uh, it's consisting of a sandstone and little amount of a shales also. Fragonia beds and Umia ammonite beds. The fossils are here, Fragonia vigorous Supine species and uh, Australia Lyceras and some uncausal, unpausable terrace content also there. And next one, it is a bush formation. In a bush formation, it has a Umia plant beds and characteristics of fossils are uh, here Thelophyllum uh, fossils. And there is a unconformity between uh, Deccan traps uh, and uh, Umia beds. And next, coming into this is a uh, formation. These are all we discussed Umia formations and this uh, some references. And okay. And again, we have uh, some uh, uh, Cretaceous uh, group that is also we uh, discussed. The Cretaceous was uh, named after the chalk hills in which were located in the Western uh, Europe. The Cretaceous is a largely marine with expression of a continental faces in a Gondwan land. And there is uh, some uh, transgression uh, process. Hello, sir. The yeah, arrow can come up. What? What? Sir, arrow, arrow. Uh, topic, last uh, one to know. Achha, you are writing now. Yes, sir. Okay. Forward. Sure, sure, definitely. Yes. Okay, I'll do one thing. Okay, you can write from here. Very far. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Okay. One more, it is also there. Sorry. Punch my formation also. You can do. Ah, okay. You can. Uh, 
right from here because of uh, uh, i do one thing sir uh, suresh yes sir yeah i will uh, send you this uh, you send me that is the what uh, whatsapp uh, number or a mail to me okay sir and i'll uh, send this ppt to you okay okay sir because of actually it is a live uh, class na oh, yes sir uh, so that it will take a time you have a very less time yes sir only you can write the main uh, points okay sir okay thank you thank you sir again um, i'm going to share sure. no share kar raha tha darve okay yeah yeah before going to this is a gone one uh, yeah, no. group and we have a, a cretaceous group also and based on the geological uh, remarking uh, things and based on the geological uh, features the cretaceous uh, period it was uh, mentioned uh, this is also belongs to the mesozoic uh, formation triassic jurassic and final one it is a uh, cretaceous uh, period and again it has a uh, consisting of a four uh, formations the first one it is a uh, dalmia formation and it was uh, located above the precambrian uh, basement or upper uh, gondwana bed and it's a uh, consisting of a pyretiferous uh, gray shales and the limestones and it's a uh, having the fossiliferous of astropods ammonites and the small uh, foraminifera including with uh, some plant fossils and next formation it is a uh, uttar formation this uh, uttarpur formation uh, it's a rest either or uh, dalmia pur uh, formation or dalmia formation and it has a upper gondwana sediments or it's uh, located over the precambrian basement and it's uh, consisting of shales sandy clays and coral uh, limestones and some phosphatic nodules also and next one it is tirthrapalli formation it is a rest with a minor uh, unconformity over the rocks of uh, uttarpur formation and the formations are consisting of a uh, limestone it is indicating an environment of a deposition of a mud uh, flat uh, bottoms with a depth of uh, 7 to 8 fathoms uh, and the formation it is a uh, intercalated rocks like a uh, nephritic and littoral basin it is uh, indicating the rock a rapid fluctuation of a sea level in the basin and final one it is a uh, arielur formation the arielur formation it is uncomfortable you are lying the tetrapalli formation the lower parts of a formation have yielded well preserved fossils of organisms inhabiting uh, the shallow and uh, quite uh, sea the upper part of uh, formation generally is uh, unfossiliferous and it is indicating the lacustrine conditions and other deposits also and next coming into the uh, gondwana group or a gondwana super group here the gondwana super group these rocks are well exposed and developed in the triangular area and it is uh, bounded by the 
Damodar, Narmada, so on valleys in the north. And it's also located along the Godavari Valley. The trending has a uh, northwest, uh, southeast, and it's uh, extended in the north part of north part of the east coast of the peninsula, India. Uh, in a triangular area, the major uh, basins were uh, present, and they were having the trend in a northwest southeast trending zone mahanadi and the pranahita godavari basins and these uh, gondwana formations it's a encompasses it's a part of uh, bihar west bengal madhya pradesh maharashtra varissa telangana andhra pradesh and tamil nadu and apart from these uh, Gondwana rocks, which are found in two hills of uh, Himalaya, Assam and uh, Kashmir, and also which are located in the Saurashtra and Kutch also. The Gondwana rocks of uh, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, it's occur in the Main parts of uh, Adilabad, Karimnagar, Barangal, Kamam, East and West Godavari districts of uh, Andhra Pradesh. And a little amount of uh, patches we have identified in Sri Kakulam, Tuni, Rajamandri, Eluru, Gunturu, and uh, in other regions also. And when you Yeah. The Gondwana actually the term it was defined uh, by the HP Medley Court. It was in uh, 1872. And the word was uh, derived from the kingdom of uh, Gond, a great uh, and ancient tribe who still inhabited in the central province like uh, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh area. Why we are calling this is a super group? The term super group, uh, it may be used for uh, several associated groups or, and it's association of a groups and formations, and it has a significant uh, Lithological properties when we are compared with the others. Yeah, now you see the here the Gondwana basin in our peninsular uh, India. This uh, shape, this black color shape or black color structure, it is uh, showing the Gondwana formations in our uh, India. You see here the maximum is they have a contain along the Godavari Valley in our Telangana state it was located along the Godavari Basin. Coming into the lithology, the Gondwana super group it is a uh, made up of uh, six to seven kilometers of uh, thickness and the succession mainly it has a previous tile and the last post terrain uh, deposits and these are uh, glacial uh, deposits which occurs in the base and intercalations of the fossiliferous of a marine deposits which occur both in the lower and upper parts of a succession. The main uh, rock types are uh, found as a sandstone, shale, clays, conglomerates, and coal seams also. 
mainly we will uh, get coal from this is gondwana super coal and not only that one the gondwana succession is contain about uh, 600 meter thickness of a lava flow of a basalt the rocks of gondwana are found occupying the basin shaped depressions in the boulder formation and such depressions sometimes the uh, generally uh, it is a uh, correspondent to the existing river valleys just definitely example for uh, godavari river basin along this is a godavari river basin the gondwana beds were uh, originated and the mineralogical point of view we can see the more mineral deposits were formed along this uh, basin here yeah, stratigraphic uh, classification a major part of a uh, sediments are uh, confined uh, two three uh, tracks which include keol damoda son mahanadi and pranahita godavari basins the gondwana super group it is divided into the two major divisions it's based on their lithological and paleontological evidences the first one it is a two fold classification uh, it was explained by the wt blanford and again it was divided into the lower and upper gondwanas which are characterized by the fossils like example for the glass of terrace and uh, telophyllum and second one it is a three fold classification it was given by the hughes who was identified a mixed uh, flora those are all uh, dichrodium in between the glass of terrace and uh, telophyllum flora yeah this is a normal uh, stratigraphic succession which was uh, located in uh, son mahanadi graben and when you come into this one the classification of a gondwanas so when you come into this geology according to this is a geological uh, time scale the periods and the divisions your carboni um, peres permian jurassic triassic and uh, cretaceous when you see these uh, geological times the carboni peres the div it has a upper division and here the upper division it is a concealed tall chair group and the formations are a rigba tall chair and boulder beds were identified and when you go into the permian the permian it is divided into the three uh, uh, divisions here lower middle and uh, upper it is a considered uh, as a damodar group and the formations are ratara bari barakar baran majors rani ganj formations we have to identify it here and uh, when you uh, see the uh, triassic uh, time in a triassic time the divisions are uh, divided as a bunter muskel cock caper and uh, rahetak these group again if you can go into this is a uh, panchat and uh, mahadeva group here uh, the panchat and the mahadeva group there is a, a distant formity for uh, distant formity was uh, identified the formations we can 
so identified here the panchet in a panchet group malaria and manchet formations in mahadeva and east coast formations also identified here uh, it has a chintalpuri sandstone it is it is a concealed uh, panchet uh, formation panchet group and golapalli budavada these two formations will come under the mahadeva and next one it is uh, jurassic uh, and cretaceous these two periods have been divided into the upper and lower and the group uh, it is uh, concealed uh, jabalpur the umia and uh, jabalpur formations will come under the Jab jabalpur uh, group only and the east coast formations are here tirupati and apalu satyavedu formation and there is a chance we have to identify the marine intercalations in the marine intercalations umia marine bed in the madhya pradesh it's a characteristic of a highly porphyritic marine and it has a selly limestone uh, uh, fossils the products are uh, spiri perina and reticularia and others and the damda group also it's a uh, consisting uh, karhar bari varakar baram medens and uh, rani grants formation and karhar bari consisting the pebbly grits and sandstone uh, fossils of uh, uh, gangama pteris buradia glassopteris glassopteris indica gangama pteris cycloptedis we can identify and particular when you come into this is upper gondwana the upper gondwanas which are located into the districts of uh, andhra pradesh uh, godavari districts of andhra pradesh and it's a familiar and rest uncomfortably upon the chintalapodi uh, sandstones which are called a kampi sandstone also and this uh, chintalapodi sandstone it's lying directly over the archean gneisses and it's consisting of the high grade metamorphic rocks and it's located in the eastern uh, uh, mobile guts and gollapodi uh, sandstones gollapalli sandstones ragavapuram shales and uh, tirupati sandstones overlying the chintalapodi sandstone contains the talophyllum and uh, tantal taloni parenthesis and it is assigning them to the upper gondwana and again uh, there is a structural activity in a uh, gondwanas and these are structural activities it is a uh, uh, confirmed that it has a faulted boundaries like as a graben and these half of a graben structures were arranged along the linear uh, zones and when you come into this uh, pranahita godavari and uh, son mahanadi basins the trend it's uh, showing uh, along the fault the trend directions are uh, north west south east and uh, north south uh, in a rajmahal basin and most of the um, gondwana basin in a peninsula which are the free from the folding and they were uh, present and they confined uh, it's a more pronounced faulted margin of drops uh, and uh, this is a pre fold classification you see here a lower gondwana middle gondwana and uh, upper uh, gondwana in lower gondwana salchair uh, glaciers karhar bari barakar baren mazet and dani ganj uh, formations we have to see and again when you go into this is a 
middle gondwana in a middle gondwana it's uh, showing the it's uh, showing the panchet parsora malayas and uh, mahadeva and the relation of this is the uh, three flows floras you see here the first one it is a uh, in a lower gondwana it is related with the gangama pteris blasa pteris flora and second one it is a dicrodium flora and when you come into this is a upper gondwana it is related to the stages of a raj mahal kota jabalpur umia formations and here uh, telophyllum it is associated with our relation with the telophyllum flora they based on this the three fold classification uh, uh was done and uh, here if you come into this is a uh, uh, different uh, formations uh this already i uh, told you this role Don Mahanadi Valley and uh, economic importance. The economic significance in the Gondwanas. The main uh, economic deposit it is here the coal. the coal uh, presented in the barakar rani ganj formations of uh, damodar group and it's a uh, consisting of the most important coal bearing uh, formations all of these uh, gondwana coal it is uh, the composition of a bituminous variety and in our particularly telangana and uh, andhra pradesh if we can uh, see in the two states and particularly in uh, telangana state we can extract the coal from gondwana super group and it is uh, located in this state of uh, adilabad karimnagar uh, warangal and kamam districts these districts are the main sources uh, for uh, coal and the coal we are extracting from the gondwana super group and iron ore uh, about a 700 meters thickness of ferrogenous shales it is known as a iron stone shale these shales form a deposit of acid right uh, iron ore and it's a uh, contain about uh, 40 to 50 percentage of uh, iron next one it is the clay the clays of various types are uh, found in abundance in a gondwana rocks these clays are used for making of refactory bricks and pottery and uh, china bare materials building stones the gondwana sand stones are generally of uh, infer uh, in quality however uh, some of these uh, it's uh, being used as a building uh, stones and most of the gondwana coal it is found in uh, damodar pirates gondwana land complex is uh, we know that it is in uh, india africa south america and uh, antarctica the reserves of a uh, great a in gondwana coal fields most of the get we can uh, get from uh india non coking coal its so production almost it's uh, all the states that are assam arunachal pradesh meghalaya nagaland uh 
and other uh, graded on the basis of a useful uh, uh, heat value in uh, kilo calories per kg. And finally, uh, Tancheru and Karhadbari formations. I, these two were uh, formed in a thermocarboniferous and it records abrupt changes to over from the glacial marine uh, to terrestrial uh, fluvio lacustrine and depositional uh, environment. And the lower Gondwana is uh, characterized by the Glassopteris uh, flora, and whereas uh, the upper Gondwana is uh, characterized by the Telophyllum flora. And the lower Gondwana is uh, consisting of uh, predominantly upper Paleozoic rocks, and whereas the lower Gondwana basin combines the essential of uh, Mesozoic uh, rocks. And let us uh, see Deccan uh, rocks. Yeah, next coming into the Deccan rats. The mm, Deccan rats, the Cenozoic era is uh, divided into the three phases And it's divided uh, as a tertiary and a quaternary periods. The tertiary system further is divided as a paleogene and neogene. And paleogene is consisting of a paleocene, eocene, oligocene. Neogene uh, is consisting of a miocene and paleocene. Here the Quaternary system comprises uh, the pale Pleistocene and the uh, Holocene. Holocene means it is a recent uh, period. The rock formations in the quaternary system, it is uh, generally it is uh, considered as a uh, younger formations. The tertiary boundary it is marked uh, by the basaltic uh, volcanism. This basaltic volcanism, it is called as a Deccan traps. Yeah. Yes, when it is a closing of the Mesozoic era, and it was marked by the out pouring of enormous lava flows, and it's a spread over vast areas in uh, Western and the Central and uh, Southern India. And it was issued a long narrow fissures or uh, cracks in the earth's crust. A large amount of magma basin and uh, therefore it is uh, called as a fissure type eruption. These rocks are formed from the cooling of the lava is called as a Deccan trap. That means here, huge amount of uh, lava it was flowed on the edge surface and it was uh, occupied a vast portion on the surface and these are uh, Lava slowly it is going to the crystallized and it is formed as a traps. 
these traps uh, are called the Deccan traps. The Deccan traps formation it's a result of uh, tectonic disturbances and it is uh, connected with the formation of a Gondwana land. And these Deccan traps has a uh, less viscous and spread to form a or it's a spread as a terrace or it's a spread as a plateau. The Deccan basalt appears as a massive, very compact and uh, vesicular. The vesicles are formed as a result uh, of the sudden eruption on the surface due to the trapping of escaping gases. That means uh, the gases are escaping, always the gases having the escaping nature. These gases are escaping from this is a, a eruption. So that here the vesicles were formed. And these vesicles were filled by the secondary mineralizing uh, solutions. So that it is uh, giving the structure of a amygdal amygdalan section. So it is called as a amygdaloidal basalt. You know, you can uh, see here the distribution of a Deccan traps in uh, India. Yes, this is uh, indicating this gray color, it is uh, indicating that Deccan traps were uh, distributed. It is uh, located between the Darwar Kraton and nearby the Aravali and Bundelkhand Kraton. And also, it is surrounded by the uh, Bursar Kraton. Okay, so the area it is uh, occupied by the Deccan traps. Uh, around about, uh, it was uh, 50,000 square kilometers, including the Mumbai, Ketiawar, Kutch, Madhya Pradesh, Central India, and uh, other parts of it. And it's also found in uh, Belgium in the south. Uh, Sirbuja and the Josh, Joshpur in the northwest. The present distribution is showing that the traps may have been occupied uh, in some of the area intervening between the main mass and the outlying patches. And the Deccan traps are thus the most extensive geological uh, formations in a uh, peninsular India. And the lava, it's a close occasionally as much as uh, 15 to 30 meters the thickness as a result of this as an active compressive movement of by Tethian region during the late Cretaceous uh, period uh, it has it, some tension factors and they were uh, developed in the peninsula of India. It is a re resulting that the enormous quantity of lava is to come to out of the surface and uh, it uh, spread hundreds of uh, kilometers. And the Deccan traps were uh, introduced uh, by the WH uh, sites in 1883, and there were from the name of a uh, vernacular uh, Dakan. The con, meaning it's a uh, south and the trap. The trap word uh, from the Swedish. It's a uh, giving the meaning. Stay to. Step like stay it means you know that. Uh, uh, step like uh, structure. And the thickness about uh, here. It is uh, around uh, three thousand uh, meters along the coast of the Mumbai.
and if you go into two hours of the southern uh, india it's a uh, limit it is uh, between the 600 to 800 meters and if you go into the eastern it is uh, showing about 150 meters in cut straps are about uh, 800 meters of the thickness and individual lava flows varies from the uh, few feet to 36 meters and at uh, the borehole uh, drill at uh, Bushawal up to 370 meters uh, deep and it's uh, revealed uh, 29 uh, flows and generally horizontal in their deposition and some very slightly it has a uh, inclined about around uh, 20 degrees and stratigraphic uh, classification Deccan traps overlie the Archean's colored V group and uh, Bema group and it has the uh, anthropomboli along the southern margin in touch they overlies the Jurassic rocks in Narmada Valley. They overlie the Baga beds and near the Jabalpur. And again, it's uh, having the Lameta beds. All these uh, Lameta beds, all these are the rocks we call the intratropians. And more uh, its beds are these bog beds and lameta beds. And it is a classified into the three traps, lower trap, middle trap, upper trap. Uh, the lower trap, it has a 150 meters uh, thick, central province and the eastern margin. Middle trap, it has a 200 meters thick. It is central India and Malwa. Upper trap, it has a 450 meters. It was uh, in Mumbai and the Katyavar. Yeah, when you come into this is a classification, this one. Deccan traps have the classified broadly three. That's a uh, upper, middle, and the lower. That's what we have seen that is. And uh, Lower beds is measuring about uh, 150 meters and consisting of a number of uh, positive pairs and uh, pins. And it has a uh, volcanic ash. And lower uh, flows or the lower traps, which are the rest over the lamata beds. Yeah, now I'm uh, stopping here and we'll discuss uh, tomorrow about uh, paleontology and some uh, geology and uh, geology of Andhra Pradesh and uh, Telangana. And we'll see the detailed study of paleontology in tomorrow class. Thank you.